This conference will now be recorded. All right, so how is it going, everyone? Looks like we have some usuals, and Chris Baker, we got lots of Chris's on here today. Uh, looks like he's joining us today, too. That's a, a, a good treat. Uh, George is here, Jim, and other, It's Cold is here, uh, and looks like we got Rich. If anybody wants to say hi or introduce themselves or has anyone, Ronnie, good to see you, too. Uh, anything to say, please feel free to kick your mic on, jump in, and say hey. Well, I'll... Real quick, just to give a, a thanks to Tommy, Johnny, and uh, Chris. I actually got my machine in the new office. Nice. Nice. So, How'd you end up doing it? I wound up with a couple double nice. doors. I still need to do my trim work. I did not want glass, um, but I couldn't pass up the deal. I don't know if you guys have uh, restores. Their Habitat for Humanity, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. $175. So nice. I couldn't pass that up. So, yeah, it's nice to have that access if you need to bring anything in or out too. You know, to be able to 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 go through that entryway. So, what did I miss? Yeah, we did our our first cuts. Um, the mirrors were fine. Uh, the bed was unlevel, so I had to level three corners of it. Just started left one corner alone and and leveled the bed, but I was about four millimeters out. Good lord! Gotcha. Now, huh. did you pull the uh, the honeycomb and the knives out first, just a double check? Um, I did the test with the honeycomb in there, then verified okay. it that the uh, honeycomb wasn't tweaked or anything. I did remove it and put the block on the knives, and yes. Yeah, okay. Double checked it, and then after I did the alignment, uh, double checked everything with the knives, and then just reversed the process and put the honeycomb in there and tested it again. Okay. Nice. All right. Um, well, I'm Brian. I, I, we have to do the intro, right, Jim? Mm -hmm. That's part of the part of the sequence. I'm Brian. I'm with Thunder Laser, and I'll let the Chris's introduce themselves. Uh, I'm the I'm Chris, the OG Chris with Thunder Laser as well. The real Chris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm CeeLo. <laughs> he, he's also a real Chris. So everybody mm -hmm. on here that's a Chris is a real Chris. So and technically, technically, I was here before you, and then came back. So oh, <laughs> he said oh. Mm. So all well, right. So we're your uh, yeah, we're the the three amigos and and the troublemakers of thunder, I guess you could say. So anyway, but we try to keep everything ticking. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments or discussions that they want to uh, throw out there? Did we have a topic prepared? <laughs> that, I got that... an idea. You so, got what? I got a little idea. Okay. So after having my rotary device for since I bought the laser, I finally hooked it up, bought some drinkware, and it's the uh, bottom heavy. I guess you call them insulated polar camel wine tumblers. The ones where they're a little fatter at the base than they are at the top. Mm -hmm. And I'm noticing ever so imperceptibly, the text goes uphill on an angle when you sit the cup flat on the table. Like very slightly, the, the right side's <coughs> up higher than the left. Does that mean I've got it? not level you no not you, you have you have it crooked so the best thing to do is take your red dot run it across the the clasp and then you should hit the middle of the backing plate as well so the best thing to do is just take your gantry straight so run that red dot across it it should be straight in the machine but if you have it just a little bit it's just going to run uphill very easily and then do you put the base up against the, uh, the little flat panel or do you have it really, really, really close? Uh, I put it wherever it lands whenever I, I put it in the machine. And then do a test too. this little silver ring right here, yeah. which is what your eye is going to go to. If you take your laser, your red dot and put it 
when you're sitting like this and put that red dot right on that mm -hmm. and just do a test spin on it you can see mm -hmm. one if this is untrue just sort of the optical illusion off that you're running uphill and secondly you can also see how this is going to truly roll inside of your roller you can do a test on it because you can see if it's walking or if you've got it caddy cornered or if you're having a problem i test that every once in a while on some of my tumblers and sometimes you'll see a weird walk because all these things are not i just did a set of 20 here the other day and i had four of the 20 that was actually probably an eighth of an inch taller than the rest of them mm. and chris always chris always brings it up the real chris he uh <laughs> they're when they're manufactured they're they're all manufactured weird uh you'll have some that wobble you'll have some that are a millimeter longer so if you have that back plate set make sure you have clearance because otherwise it's going to bind in there and not spin at all and it'll it'll be the same batch or the same box and and they'll be all different it's yeah they don't always track the same either i mean even even if they're dimensionally the same they don't track the same way every single time either so which if you're not doing full wraps and things like that if i do when, when i do a cup it shit has a logo on it you know like a three by three it's not really that noticeable i could just run mine and go with it but if you're doing something that's a larger design or a full wrap that's really when it comes you know it gets real weird i don't know that i've ever done a full wrap maybe i should try one that that could be a topic because i personally don't feel like they're worth the money not the amount of time it takes you can't charge enough or people won't pay for it i should say yeah well it depends on which type of full wrap you're doing right like the ones where it's a pattern that has to line up versus yeah. one that you've got like dog paws going around it you know 360 completely different type of wraps yeah like that's true trying to do pattern match wallpaper yeah yeah mm -hmm. So the other thing you got to think about when they manufacture these cups, they're not all coming off the same head of a machine. You know, it's a multi-head machine or, or manufacturing process with different machines. So that's why there's going to be variances. It's just how they're manufactured. And I would assume the cheaper ones are probably more susceptible, but I bet Yeti's got it going too. That's they, one of the reasons why I just do a test run every so often. Just yeah, I just go into the whatever the heck it is the menu and then so i can just spin it you move and, yeah you move that was it and that way i can just test to see how it's sitting how they're rolling mm -hmm. or if i see a cup that when you take the lids off sometimes you can tell that the cup itself is sort of elliptical catty wampus being, yeah versus <laughs> being completely round yeah when you pull the lid off i will set that one aside and make sure that i test it before i run it because sometimes you do have to make that ever so slight adjustment now the other thing george with your if it's a tapered cup or a wine tumbler and they're tall and you're doing the text in the x direction long ways you've got quite a difference in the diameter of that tumbler you know from from the left side to the right side so that can also cause your text to well that's a yeah it's a tiny one i'm always thinking like the uh yeah yeah there's you know, not a lot of almost difference like a flask yeah yeah that's one of the hardest ones to start with too those stimulus wine glass looking things getting them chucked up right and consistent but you know those tall taper ones my wife's got one it's like a fake wood finish on it but uh you know as you're engraving on this three inch in versus the four inch in that text your image is going to look a little skewed you can use an art program to try to fix that or just figure out if you know if you care or not if it shows a little bit I think Lightburn will let you drag the skew and skew it now, like to change the perspective also, where you could just like, you know, manually just stretch it a little bit. I think it's got the drag yeah. handles you can turn on all the way around the edges of it now. We didn't have that before, so that's neat. Uh, Is that just with vector art, or do you think it's got it for the images too? I images. don't know. Nice. Most everything I put on a cup, I vectorize it anyway. It's not a raster image, so. Yeah, sometimes uh, when you're trying to do some things, taking an image and if it's in black and white, it engraves pretty well, you know, well enough to not worry about tracing it. Yeah, or you can turn the threshold mode on. Yeah, you you can you can skew an image. 
Okay. But what about just like if I typed out somebody's name, like say we're just doing names on these tall tumblers, can it stretch that? No. Okay. It will not. I just tried. Yeah, I, had no. the same thing. I just had that yesterday or day before yesterday. Yeah, you, so actually I suppose have you to could do... convert it to a bitmap and then stretch That's it. That's what you have to do. But then you can't. And then edit trace your... it again. I see. But then you can't edit your text, is what sucks about it. Instead of yeah. just having them to the point of allowing you to skew your text and then realize, oh, shit, I've misspelled that or I need to add yeah. another letter or whatever. Yeah, I, I just want to So you that. can not have to convert it to a path. Yeah. So you can keep it in the oh, format that you can so still edit you, it. With. You can skew it, but it's more of an italicize. So you can go oh. that way or that way. Oh, okay. Vector, anything that you can select should be able to skew either way. Yeah, but look almost for like a keystone or trapezoidal shape right. to it. Right, right, right. Drag one side wider and make it look. Yeah. No. The perspective change or whatever. Okay. I guess the Maybe only way you can, can add really that. do that, I guess the only way you can really do that is attach it to a circle. Because you can't attach you can't attach text to a circle in Lightburn now, right? Or to a yes. yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah you you've always yeah. been able to do so that. I guess, so I yeah. guess that would skew it, but it's not skewing it like like we're talking about manipulating it. I, I I I think if you were able to take those drag handles on the vector and where it's where you what if you unlock the aspect ratio? Does that make any effect when you drag on them? You see what I mean? It's it'd be cool if you could just say toggle that where you could just drag one side, and drag the other, you know, and not have them maintain the aspect ratio. I think that's what's keeping us from doing that on a on a piece of text. I haven't opened it up and actually look. I haven't either. I was sitting here trying to remember what I was dealing with the other day, and I was, I was aggravated because I couldn't do it in Lightburn. I think CeeLo's on it. I'm fixing open Lightburn and tinker with it too. He'll yeah, find it before I do. Yeah, I'm able to, I'm to happen. Either. Well, and there's a new feature. Uh, I don't know if it's, I don't think it's out yet, but um, typically when you do bendy text, you have a distortion of the letters. So they've gotten rid of the distortion and you can click the distortion on and off. So if you want it to skew outside towards the edges as you bend it, you can keep it. Or if you want it to be perfect as you bend it, it can now be perfect. Mm -hmm. They're quickly yeah, adding uh, more and more stuff to that. So. I still can't get the drag handles to separate. I don't. I don't see a way to make it happen. I wish. There, I wish it would. I wish you could, you know, adjust each of them independently. Drag each corner independently if you wanted. That'd be cool. That'd be nice. Text and yeah. such. Especially if you're yeah, like, if you're making a design and you know you have some type of an arch and you want the ends to be taller than the middle. That would be really, really nice. We're doing a pinched feature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's yeah, that'd be to, easily done. I, I think that's what I was trying to do the other that. day, and I actually just went in and did the word, and I was trying to do a pen or yeah, small to large, and so I just ended up going through and typing each letter independently <laughs> with a smaller like, font each time, and then set <laughs> them up. Of, yeah, I mean that's one way to do it. <laughs> well, you got to remember too, Lightburn does a lot of things, right? More than just controlling the laser. I mean, it's a great software, yeah. but sometimes you. have You've got to key up your Inkscape, your Affinities, your Illustrator, your Corel Draws to get that last little bit, right? I figure eventually so. they're going to add stuff. You know, they'll add that pissly little, excuse my language, i got to behave. Though you add that tiny little insignificant things, once they get the major things done, and I know that they're working on a lot bigger projects than our stupid little, we want to make stair step or, you know, type text yeah the whole thing i'd say i hope it doesn't get to the point like I, I love that it's got functionality but don't get to the point where it's like silhouette studio where you got to pay for another edition or like glow forge you got to pay monthly to use features or the license goes up yeah. right? or because well, or it becomes bloatware that it's so yeah, yeah. Because it's got to add well, so much and that's sort of what i worried about yeah, Oz, Oz has always been from the very, very, very beginning of, you know, when he created this from the very beginning, has always never said he would never, ever take a subscription based or a cloud based That's solution, awesome. you know, like Adobe or anything like that. He wants to keep it affordable. And if when you look at when you're paying twelve hundred dollars for FlexiSign Pro or, you know, twelve hundred dollars for Aspire, some of these other softwares, 
120 bucks for light burn. If anybody complains about that, they don't need to be running a laser. I mean, honestly, the thing is I have seen people complain about it Yeah, and I have to be have myself when I see this type of text and I'm like, they're not even worth my time because you see people do that and you're, I'm going, you're just, you know, yeah, and there's there's RD Works. That's a free solution. Of course, we give Lightburn with the Novus. That's so a non-issue with us. Uh, but if somebody wants a free solution and doesn't have Lightburn already or have a key for it, RD Works ships with every single one of them, and it's functional. You know. Uh, and I see people complain about the renewals. Are you gonna pay a renewal? I'm like, give me a break. Yeah. Well, you don't have to. <laughs> if you want to keep yeah. getting the newest stuff, you do. But you don't have to. You can you yeah. can run free forever and ever and ever. So thirty bucks some is the best do. deal in town. I've yeah, it is. I, I've seen some people still running nine point two four, you know, that we've supported recently. Just because <laughs> you remember that time when when that was the stable that version good. because they started messing with the comms, you know, trying to fix yep. all that stuff with the FTDI Mac drivers and redoing the comm systems completely. Uh Just, it, yeah, but since then, you know, it's been pretty stable as far as that stuff goes. Just look in the so. where it's been or has came from in the last, I mean, I was going to say 18 months, but hell, just the last 12, 12 to 18 months. Look at the version number differences and look at the superiority of what the software is now compared to what it was then. Yeah. Yep. Well, he's got a full staff working on it. He's got other developers there working on it now. So he's expanded, you know, so that's going to make it better for everybody too. He's got to pay those guys though. So I, I you know, there are periodic increases. You know, and and still it'll be worth it if if you know it, it'll still be worth it. I have a feeling that he will underpromise and overdeliver, just like we kind of like to do. You know, on, on his products, I don't see him changing his business model. You know, I mean, hell, look how fast they developed the fiber. Yeah, I mean that was relatively quick in perspective to what some of these companies take. Yeah, years to develop. Considering. He did it. Yeah, more. he had, he, had, he had no shortcuts either. He he reverse engineered the code just by sending, you know, data over with EasyCAD or with Ruida. Same thing. He reverse engineered the whole language basically, you know. So that's incredible in itself. And as far as I know, it's been fairly stable. I don't have a fiber, but I know people that do, mm-hmm. and they've been they everybody said it's fairly stable. Oh yeah. So, I mean that's that's impressive to me. Yeah, e- e- EasyCAD you know, is, is going to probably fall off before too long, at least easy cat and too. And that's yeah. a huge name. I mean, to most everybody. Yeah. And well, you cause you didn't have a little... choice. You were tied to it, you know, it's and you proprietary tiny, and it's, yeah. This tiny little light burn comes into play and completely shuts, you know, basically is going to corrupt crash a larger company just because their or, product is so superior. Yeah. Or it's going to well, force or, easy cat to do, get off their butts. Yeah, well, they're that and Ruida's coming out with some new stuff too, and they're innovating again. They're they're they've done more than they've done than since I've ever seen them do anything. Uh, I don't know when they're going to release any of that stuff, but you can see some of they're starting to make new videos on you know some of their their controllers and stuff. Um, but yeah, Lightburn Lightburn is definitely I wouldn't a threat you know to a lot of those operating systems, but it's going to make EasyCAD do what they did like with version three and completely rewrite the code. You know the 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 language so you know that's why <laughs> they did that on purpose so it'll take him years to decode easy cat 3 they made it completely different than 2 but which they're trying to stay they're trying to fight against you know they're a business too they sell their software so not just the controllers you know so that that's a weird dynamic i guess that's a little different than dealing with Ruida because they offer their software as part of their solution, not as a separate entity that you just buy, you know, like, like easy CAD, you got to pay for it. Well, just think so. about it. All these hackers and stuff that's out there, if they can hack, create, and, you know, compromise some of the most technical, quote unquote, technological software that's out there, he's going to break that code easily. I mean, after what he did to as fast as he got through too, I mean, he'll break yeah. it. Yep. So I it's did good do stuff. something. I did do something new and different though. I did What's cow that? ear tag, cow ear tags. Oh, okay. The laserable it, ones or just whichever ones they have. No, I got with somebody and they directed me towards yeah. um, the correct ones to get. Yeah. 
Yeah, because see, I I, I looked for those a long time ago, and I figured, oh, that'd be easy because there's lots of companies that sell them, and they say that they're lasered, but the companies wouldn't tell you where to get the blanks from. The blanks were, like, hidden. So you found what? I have found the blanks, and um, it took me a while to get the correct settings. In fact, I never thought I was ever going to get (laughs) the correct settings because the cleanup was horrid afterwards Mm -hmm. when I was even close. I mean, I was looking for a single ear tag. I was looking at 10, 20 minutes trying to get them scrubbed and cleaned, and then it was fading the tag and stuff. And all of a sudden, I just went exactly opposite of the direction that I thought was working. And they came out the point I was running them and taking them off, and they were flawless with zero cleanup. And one of the cure factors was was actually switching out the damn nozzle. To the wide one? Yeah. As soon as I switched over the wide nozzle, I started seeing some differences. Um, and I think I could still improve on them, but I had to go under, you know, generally you want to add for make them cleaner and stuff or more crisper, adding more lines per inch and stuff. So I went exactly the opposite direction. I reduced my lines per inch was like really low. Yeah. And defocused a little bit. I defocused lines per inch was down. I was like, if I can get rid of this heat and let these not gel out as bad that they would come out better. And I went from absolute crap in the beginning to, like I said, take them off a laser, throw them on the stand. Yeah. And I was done with them. And these were actually going to the, these were actually on the national level because these actually went to um, Tennessee the next day. They was leaving out of here that day to go to, was it Tennessee? I think it was. Louisville. Louisville. That's it. They were at, they were at Natalie, the North American livestock. So there, my tags actually went to the national stage within a, First ones, first three I ever did went to the national stage. Mm-hmm. I was happy just because it was something different, new, and I had never thought about doing cow tags. Yeah. I wonder how they do in a fiber. I wonder if they'd be easy to dial in on a fiber. I would think they would be as long as you could keep the heat down because nope. that's the critical thing. If you can't keep it the heat down. The hell out of it. Does okay. it really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I tried my Mopa fiber and I tried my 50 watt um, Rakus fiber, mm-hmm. and both of them just it uh, it uh, micro boils the the plastic. And I tried three different brands of uh, ear tags. I, what I haven't tried is was, the ones that are so meant sh- for shit. yeah. Yeah, well, it looks a lot worse than that. The edges were blurry too. But what yeah, I haven't tried that, so. is the, the actual two-tone ones that are that are made for the CO2. Yeah. I bought I bought some that were supposed to work on the fiber, and and it just they just ate, ate them up. And this was after a shit ton of cleanup when I had them close. That's but nice. The thing is, the thing is, you can see where when you're looking at them where you scrubbed in it i mean granted it's an ear tag they're going to get look like crap but i don't like having and the the numbers were dull once i got it dialed in the rubber if i can get that the focus come on if i get that you can see the difference between the top one and the bottom one once i got them dialed in if the stupid thing would focus you can see the difference in the color of the rubber and it's yeah. actually shinier at the bottom than the top. And that was literally getting it dialed in that the rubber actually went massively shiny, the undercoat, once I had them completely all the way down. And it was such a huge difference in the way that they looked. But that's just something I never thought I'd be doing was, you know, tags for cows. But they're fun. They're quick. They're, I think, 40 seconds a run. Yeah. You do them one at a time, or you build a yeah, jig? Yeah, well, I'm going to build a jig. These were just the three, first three, but I'm going to be doing their entire farm. And she said she's mm-hmm. going to try to get me another farm as well. At that point in time, I am building a jig. Nice. Yeah. All right. Um, well, it's intermission, whatever that means, isn't I, it? It's close, about halfway. So we went, we yeah. went from tumblers to cow tags. Yeah, with a light burn discussion in the middle. Yeah. So what's next? It has to be totally rando. Uh, let's see. We covered whiteboard last week. 
I think. Or did we cover whiteboard last week? Yeah, we went, it might have went into the after show. Yeah, I we like talked about it. That and that other, some other material that somebody brought up, they said it was like a whiteboard, but it almost had like a texture on it. Like it was meant for like a, like a plastic texture with the bubbles or whatever you want to call it. Kind of gave it a 3D look. Yeah, I forget what that was. Anybody run yeah. the golf ball? Speaking of dimples and tumblers, anybody done the golf balls yet? Golf ball tumblers? Yeah. Uh-uh. I got one sitting up here. I just haven't ran it yet. I was trying to think of anything else I've done. Cutting boards. I wonder how far that's going to... Th Does that throw the focus off in the dimples too much, you think? I don't know. Um, I want to say, because actually when um, Jason was here, he had seen one. He's like, where'd you get that from? And I told him and he went and got it. And I was like two days or three or four days later, he says, I ran one and he said it ran fine. Robert did a video on one, didn't he? Or was he just showing a picture in his feed of them? Uh, maybe he hasn't done a video on them yet, but he had one. Robert Kofi yeah. did. Or, yeah. I'm out in redneck country. I don't know how many golfers I got. I think it's more cow tipping. Or running ever, or running ever buggies. There you go. Nice. That's the one I did. Took to I did a bunch of these different ones and took it to a show recently. That turned out real good. The half tone seems to work the best for those those three D looking ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That. Hey, that's something we could talk about. About engraving on whether it's three D illusion using a a dithering method or whether it's true grayscale where it's varying power and what that means with certain substrates. As long as you do it in English, it sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's, 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 here's what I see. So grayscale, if it's set up properly is I use it only for, for 3d relief where I actually want to get changes in depth and you run multiple passes, just like you do with CNC, because my thought is, and it depends on the substrate, but if you have just a piece of birch plywood, for instance, whether you burn that at 20% and a dot next to it at 30%, it's just going to be burnt. I don't think there's enough definition or enough resolution there or enough change in contrast with power between you know zero and 50%, whatever you would use as a range for the grayscale to make that huge of a difference. It's either gonna burn the wood or it's not gonna burn the wood. I think dwell, dwell time or the speed has a whole lot more to do with how much contrast you get with the burn. So I don't ever see grayscale as being able to replicate a 3D illusion anywhere near you could do with, like he said, uh, half tone or another method, you know, j stuck to your Jarvis or any of this, where you're just making a dot and it's either a dot or it's not. You know, you're, what I mean? you're, you're talking with no depth, though. You're talking no depth. Right. Yeah. So I see a lot of people take a gray, set it to grayscale, put an image in, and try to replicate that on a piece of plywood. And that yeah. in itself, on that one pass, you're not going to get a lot of change. So you almost have to dither it. You almost have to, to let it be, you know, interpolated by light burn and be outputted in a way where it's visually what you want because you're not going to get enough of depth now what about three what about aluminum what about anodized aluminum i know that it is one of the best receptors of high resolution photorealistic imagery with the laser can the layer and see that's the other thing if the power changes it just it's going to be either whether you hit metal or you don't you see what I mean? So would grayscale be a good choice for anodized even? You see what well, I'm saying? I've I've done some of those little cards on uh, the fiber, and they're in I guess too on the the CO2. They're not necessarily like true anodized or the cheap ones you get off of Amazon. People say it was like a lacquer or something, but it has a glossy finish. You can adjust the power to knock the gloss off, so you still have the flat un coat underneath, and then you can take it down to bare metal so it does give you kind of a nice three-tone look right. to it now, there there is some stuff you can play with that um probably easier on my fiber because of the wattage and uh, controllability of the power or some uh, you know the substrate yeah yeah i'm not doing George, my what is that a 
Did you engrave <laughs> that? Boom. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. You're you're Your muted. Off. Oh, these are not firing after my. There you go. I turned a bullet into a necklace. So I punched out the primer, and then uh, brought it over to my buddy. We inserted the loop so it hangs from the mm -hmm. top, and then I had him repack the bullet. Nice. Are you gonna those? Out. It's it's really hard to work on five five six. You want to work on the larger diameter ammo. And I found yeah, I out. I responded to you, George. Yeah, I saw that. Thank you. Okay. Oh, is there some chats going on? I haven't been looking. Yeah. Typical, What's funny huh? is when I still they pull on the bendy caps, the dot's blue. I don't get the green dot, and it. Works. And it might be blue. I might be colorblind. I don't know. The the <laughs> dot for the bendy text, it's purple. Yeah. Purple. <laughs> purple. I thought but it was it blue. It's lavender. <laughs> Get to the uh, where it's straight. Or double click the dot and it'll straighten it back up. If you double click oh, that yeah. little whatever color it is, it'll it'll reset it back to straight. Yeah, Brian might be right. It might be a purplish color. Who knows? I guess it depends. Yeah, on it is. I do have a quick question. Has anybody done um, after? Do the cutting board and you soaked it in oil. Have you ever ran it back underneath the laser afterwards? Mineral oil. Yes. Highly flammable. Any issues after no. you let the oil vape out? Okay. I wasn't nope. going to let it. I've got I've got three that I forgot to do one simple thing on, and I got to rerun the backs of them after I soaked them. And I've got them pretty much dried out. They're sitting there, you know, just air drying, and there's not much oil coming out of them. And I was like, you're you're yeah. going to get a crap ton of residue. I figured that, but then again, when you start looking at the different solid woods to that you engrave, like we engrave cherry all the time, depending on how, what your settings are in your speed is the amount of residue you get, whether you have air on high air, low air, big nozzle, little nozzle, it doesn't matter. It's your power settings in, in reality. So you're probably going to have to take that cutting board and take it back to the bench and sand it it's probably going to be the easiest way to deal with it and then re-oil it again i figured so, i was going to clean them up but i'm basically i'm only running 418 and it's only a text it's only literally that about that big is all i got i got to put the realtor's name on the back side of them and so it's such a, yeah it was such a minor thing and i was just doing trying to do too many things and i was glad i got them done i took them in there and threw them in the oil and i was like about half an hour later, I was like, "Ah, oh, shit!" <laughs> so I learned how to cut five quarter inch black walnut with the laser. <laughs> nice. <laughs> what wattage did, did you have? The one thirty? No, I got a hundred. Get the one hundred. <clears throat> okay. Did you did say you five quarter? Five five quarter. eight. Five quarter. So inch and a quarter. Inch yeah. Inch. Really? Yeah. I did it. I did it with my eighty. I had the well, new. Walnut four signs i did last year for the realtor they were all inch and a quarter and i ran 0.5 millimeters per second but it'll do it <laughs> 10 millimeter, i was running 10 millimeters a second 90 power three passes okay multiple passes i don't like yeah, multiple passes sometimes did, you don't have a choice with that thick but but when it's yeah when it's inch and a quarter you just got to do what you've got to do because that's asking a lot <clears throat> I ran it at 2.5 millimeters a second at 100%. One pass? A pass and a half. The next pass was <laughs> at my top. Yeah. Yeah. So I got I cool. And I the cut was clean. Straight clean cut. I used the, uh, the four inch head and I got it uh, about three millimeters off the surface. Mm -hmm. oh, and then I ran the air all the way out just yeah to go and i wasn't even thinking when i said the passes 10 and uh, three passes i was only running a two inch head because i forgot to switch the heads out i was trying to do too many things and i literally made it that inch and a quarter with the two inch head yeah i i prefer the two inch uh on well uh, when I, I i cut half inch if i cut anything and some three quarter inch acrylic but that's just me why is chris smiling what did i say what did i do <laughs> it, it's being recorded so 
So we oh, realized that's why I let it go. The the I'll, four inch does really well with the way the and I'm not going to use the proper technical terms, but the the distance that the beam is straight. So yeah. we were uh, cutting one inch foam. Yeah. And the playing curve. With inch lens, trying to get the settings right, and realized, okay, it's not going all the way through. And when it goes through, it's all cockeyed and angled. So we threw the four inch lens in, and one pass, stupid fast, straight cuts. Um, yeah. It works amazingly well. So it's, rem I guess, reminding people that that distance for the four inch works great for thicker, even though yeah. you're cutting something as silly as foam. Right. Yep. That's how clean so, one of those cuts that I did on this is one inch, and that's how clean the cuts came out. And that was do either y'all have external air, George or Jim? Oh yeah, both. You know we only rated to fifty five psi, but I gotta wonder like if you put that four inch nozzle three millimeters away and just put a direct line to a big air compressor and let that thing ninety psi eat. You know, you got to have a good compressor to do it, especially that long cut. Will and see what that would you, do. Will y'all, if no. I blow something up, no. will you fix straight, it? He said straight line it. Straight to the head. Straight to the head. Mm -hmm. I passed the solenoids and everything. He wants you to come straight off the off the wall. Like, no flow control. I mean, like, I'm only running. Wedding. You're talking <laughs> about 90 to 150 PSI straight off of the air yeah. compressor. No, I, I've got the thing. I'm gonna say, no, I don't. Know, even, I mean, I don't even, know if the poly tubing will withstand. I, I assume it would do like 150 I psi. I think the coupling will blow, and we I, I've I seen think, the poly tubing split. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm there's really definitely a point of diminishing returns. I mean, you know, where it becomes ineffective, where it's just blowing I mean, more air. I'm only running but, 40 psi. I don't even run the 55. I'm only running 40. Yeah, I don't either. Having it, and not having well, any I've, issues. In, I've got a little compressor that can't keep up at 20 something PSI. It, it's quiet and small and fits my garage. So if you wanted to do this test, you would need one of those probably 220 volt massive freestanding. I think Tommy's got a big enough compressor to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I can test yeah, it too. Wind scroll or something. <laughs> yeah. And just let that thing eat and see what it does for your cuts. That'd be interesting to test. I, I might test that. And I have the NPC loud. Test, okay. Well, so. If, if you don't get to it, CeeLo, I'm going to. <laughs> I wouldn't even probably run the poly tube through the uh, IGUS track, the, the flexible track. I, I might just run that out the left-hand side door with enough um, slack on it. Make sure it doesn't get in the laser path. But yeah, yeah. yeah I've got there. enough tubing that I can just disconnect from my first regulator. Because, I mean, if y'all seen the videos of our setup, We've got regulators along the way, so I can just do a quick disconnect of the regular of the tubing from the back, from the regulator straight into the the head. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, it's too bad Travis is not here because I'm all the dumb shit he's done. I'm sure he's thought of it or tried it. <laughs> yeah. What do you and, want and me to cut and try? I, I'm thinking if you do like an inch pass and do another inch, you know, like draw separate lines. If you could do it where you could pause it in between and you could do one at 10% or, or 10 PSI, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and keep going and then cut it in half this way and look at the cross section, you'll be able to see, you know, the what what how the air affected each of those, leaving speed and power the same. That that might be a neat, like fun. That, that, yeah, that sounds, that does, that sounds neat. It sounds like a live demonstration <laughs> next Thursday or two Thursdays from now. Well, yeah, that's beyond Thanksgiving. So two Thursdays from now. Mm -hmm. That's what that sounds there's, like. There's your topic, Brian. You're always wanting a topic. There's your topic. Yeah, we, we, I'm sorry. We recently changed our policy. We're no longer taking uh, recommendations <laughs> for topics. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Hey, wait a minute. I thought I thought I had control of the timelines. <laughs> Did I just get demoted? Jim, you're going to have control of anything that you want. Uh, hey, you guys are talking about over. airlines. I, ha I don't know if you can see, right there on my laser, I got this really nice digital gauge. Oh, my, yeah. My That's laser. I, I found that. one on that. Except I, I didn't know if there's a way where you, once you get into PSI mode, if you can let it go over 20 PSI. 
Yeah, yeah, it should go over twenty. Unless you're outflowing I, where your compressor can't maintain twenty psi in the line. Right. Uh, I don't know if you see it in the back, right next to. Let's see. So there's yep, my. I see it. There's these waves right over there. I've got it set to about fifty-five going, going out. So or fifty. 50 going out, so this way it's just below the threshold of the machine at 55. Oh, it looks like the digital gauge is limiting me to about 20. So I would say uh, as you are running, like hit the green button, read what the regulator gauge says if it's dropping. But also the static too, pressure versus flow are different. Yeah, your flow rate's going to be different. Now, put your finger, hit that button, put your finger over top of your nozzle. Yeah, if you, if you close off the flow, it will... Yeah. Hey, do all the OGs Pressure. have that? Mine did. I thought they did that special for me. Hey, George. No. What you, what you want to do is now take your finger, hit the green button on the left, your high pressure. Take your finger and put it over top of your nozzle. Yeah. And then you'll see the back pressure because you're at a flow rate and not a back pressure rate. Does that make sense? It, if I'm especially if I put my six millimeter nozzle on, you got to yeah, really crank the air up before before you ever see anything because technically the orifice of that six millimeter nozzle has a wider inside diameter than the inside diameter of the tubing that's feeding it, which is only about four millimeter. So you'll never see a a true pressure. Uh, reading out of it as long as there's air flowing out. Probably going to still lose some because there's going to be some leakage in there. Well, yeah, there'll be there, there's some loss yeah. and stuff too. But I, I mean, ultimately, no matter what it says, whether it's accurate or not, whether it's 20 psi or 10 psi a, or 20 gigawatts, it's just a gauge, just a scale. Yeah. You know, this is something and once you, you figure out that 12 gigawatts of air is good for cedar, it doesn't really matter what you call it. To be real honest, I wish they would not call the air assist stages high and low. I think that's misleading. They're not preset from the factory. The high side may be all the way off. The low side may be wide open. And I think calling them high and low predisposes people to thinking, oh, that one's set to be high air. This one's set to be low. No further adjustment is necessary when that's not actually the case. We could call them stage one and stage two or stage a and stage b and we still know that one stage is set to low and one is set to high and we can still use it as such you know and, and that may just the, be you know and for the i have to be politically correct on this uh for the um uh what were i looking for for the people that can't figure things out i guess you could put it one stage is cut and the other one is engraved but it's not. No. What if you, what if you're acrylic. cutting in two passes? You don't want high air because it's like going to blow right back out. It's not. It's Sorry. whether you cut all the way through in one pass or not is really what the deciding factor, at least to me, is on whether you use a very high pressure air or a lower pressure air. If I'm cutting all the way through, I'll use high. Anything else, I'm going to use low. A score, for instance, that would still I, be low. Acry yeah. Acrylic. You could... Acrylic. You're not using high for acrylic. Yeah, uh, I guess for either true. one for cut. Yeah. And that's why I don't think we should use words like high and low that that our our we have two stages that are infinitely variable and we should use them as such and they should be treated as such, not a high and a low or an on and an off, you know, and, and several right. users that only so, cut have both them set to high so they don't have to worry about yeah one or the other. So it's so you mentioned you don't like high air for scoring and that's what she runs is high air because she doesn't like the look of the low air for scoring yeah and, and, and at the end of the day one. whatever settings get you the result and output you desire that exactly. that's right i mean uh, it, some what? people find that running a high air blows that stuff away so much that you don't get any soot which is perfect if that works that's great you know uh and, and there's What's no the go ahead i'm sorry go ahead no I don't even remember what I was going to say. <laughs> What's the glit in the matrix that causes when you're done cutting using the high air side that it switches to the low air? Where's the, the TL glitch? timer? The TL timer. Is it the TL timer? Oh, 
only one side stays on and they let the air run for 10 seconds, I guess, again, to evacuate smoke or whatever. I don't necessarily see the need. I could probably turn them down. But I think that's what happens is they have it, the machine set from the factory. So the exhaust, of course, that's a good idea for it to stay on a few seconds after, you know, the job gets done with the TL timer. But the air assist does it, too. I don't know why, but it's because of the TL timer. I, no, no. The, you misunderstood. Literally, we're cutting with high air. It stops cutting. The head stops and then it switches to low air while it's resting. After it's done. Right, because now you're not using high air. Now it's just using whatever stage the TL timer is keeping on for 10 seconds. So it okay. may switch back over to Sometimes low. Sometimes it does it. Sometimes it may cut one time and do that. And then the next cut, it doesn't do it. And then 15 yeah. cuts down the road, it'll do it again. Yeah, as long as it's not doing it in the middle of a cut, that that's when it no. would worry me. If it's done and the job is complete and then it does something goofy, I can't explain that. I know that it has to do with the TL timer and, and keeping the air assist on. Uh, I can't explain that particular phenomenon, though. Uh, I, I think it's funny, and trust me, y'all will be the first email I send if it starts doing that in the middle of the cut. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> And you'll get that canned response like, are you using sand instead of start? Are you on a Mac or a PC? So keep those two <laughs> in mind. And, and I, I think we're, we're rather proficient with. <laughs> I'd say so. I'd say so. I, I did find that. Or we're just going to ask on Facebook and get 40 different answers. No, oh God. <laughs> Shut up, Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I just find out the it, truth, though. Oh, I, yeah, it's, 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 none of them are right either. <laughs> um, I did find out a new, new reason to have a uh, a uh, switch that you can just turn on your exhaust without having the laser on. Found a whole new purpose for the laser, especially when it's attached to your kitchen. <laughs> wife, if that's saw something. Burn something. The wife, she went and started. She was saw making one of her soups chilies and she was sauteing um vegetables and she left the oil sit in the pan a little too long and our kitchen turned into a complete smoke bath and before all the damn alarms went off i ran out here she says where are you going i opened up the shop door lifted the lid and hit the high speed on the exhaust fan <laughs> it evacuated that kitchen quite quickly i was impressed with how much how how much smoke that it actually took out of the kitchen by just having I run an eight inch infinity, but having that button available was actually sort of nice because I was able just to run out of here and hit it. Yeah, that's pretty neat. My thoughts were it's going to take the next time I do our bathroom, I'm thinking about taking an, an eight inch or six inch infinity fan instead of having an actual bathroom exhaust. Four. Just have that hooked four inch. Yeah. Do a, just have dude, if you need a fan, if you need a fan like that, you need to go to the clinic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no it's for when my son visits okay well that that makes it all better then yeah he oh, can run man. you out of the entire house but no i was thinking i was like well this you know those handle moisture and everything else because they're made for grow rooms mm -hmm. so that would make one hell of an exhaust fan for a bathroom to get the it would the even the four inch one would would or the that's six that's even the, yeah yeah either one so of them i have I have the six inch when I did my uh, remodel, the AC infinity with the digital display and it's over. I got to run it out. Yeah. I have it in my bathroom. I run it at like three or four. <laughs> so I wasn't the only one that thought about it. Okay. Oh, no, well, no, no, he no, actually have, implemented it. There's a difference, <laughs> <laughs> but I would say go with the four inch. The four inch is plenty. It, it's plenty. Yeah. I don't ever need to use eight or 10 or anything. I, it, yeah. Four inch is plenty. Our bathroom's going to be huge when I get it done. It's going to be, uh, what is it, 10 by 20 is going to be our master bath. So it's going to be a huge room. And that's the reason why I was thinking, because our regular bathroom fans, it's not going to suck enough air out. And I started thinking after seeing how much smoke I pulled out of that kitchen so quick. Because, I mean, a 10 by 20 bathroom, that's larger than probably Remember. most bathroom fans can handle. Remember, you're yeah. pulling AC out too, or heat, whatever. No, well, it's just heat or AC. <laughs> and it's only for a short time. 
you can you can clear that bathroom out in 30 seconds with moving that much air yeah because my wife takes a shower it's like a fog bank Ooh. in the bathroom uh-uh. i'm glad she takes a shower yeah so am i <laughs> it's right, my well. it was always a running joke when she was growing up i guess everybody was warned if she was getting in the shower because they had her dad actually had to put a larger hot water tank in their house because of her because she was they had a 150 gallon hot water tank and she would literally use the whole entire tank up mm, i'd yeah. be out there squeak 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 turn I, that thing yeah. off I, I, here comes I a cold have... shower Three ladies in my household, and I can guarantee you that my hot water heater definitely gets the workout. <laughs> yeah, you got to get yeah. one of those on-demand water heaters. Uh huh. Oh yeah, that's what I'm going to put in here next. Yeah. Where um, Where did the uh, Where did the guy go that was doing the photos? The The depth engraving. He's gone. Uh, right? uh, Chris ball. Baker. Yeah, he left Chris. about fifteen. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, hell, I, well, I does anybody else have anything time. else? We got like ten more minutes. Anybody got that any was, topics? What? That was your fill in, Brian, for you to come up with some. What? What was the fill in? Bathrooms. Did your wife taking a shower? Bathrooms. Okay. Yeah. Evacuate well, the bathrooms. Who's this? Not Brian. I thought <laughs> it was Travis. I thought it was Travis coming in, but. I did a thing today. A thing? Oh, you did do a thing today. Oh, that's pretty. Wait, wait, wait. Did you take off the rest of it and polish? I did. It's slide? chrome now. Yeah. It okay. Is... That's pretty. I have another one on the other side, but I, the, the snake didn't come out right. I got to flatten it out and redo it, but it'll look kind of like the skull does. But again, it came out nice three dimensional. Hmm? Did anybody ever figure out the proper speeds and settings on the fiber for stippling the, the Glock composite? Because from what I understand, that stuff is way different than any other kind of composite out there. It's hard to dial I do in. have plans. I have plans on trying it, but I got to sand it down first to get rid of the current stippling on it. Mm hmm. So, CeeLo, before I forget, yeah, you're getting you're getting stainless, copper, nickel, and steel. Okay, and you're sending me the files, right? Uh, yeah. As soon as they get off their butt and send it. Okay. Yeah, his, his engineer fell asleep on him. No, no, it's the 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 owners of the that do the buckles. Um, but. You you just reminded me with that pistol of uh, other things that him and I were talking about. So being able to show that stuff to him as well, because um, in reality, I'm hoping it'll work. He'll buy it for me and we'll run right. his jobs for him. You know, you just used a baby. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. But yeah, if I can help you sell sell some jobs, I will be more than happy to do it. All he needs to do is front me the money so I can buy the damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, you trying know, to get a fiber? Yeah, and it's also figuring out which fiber is going to do what we need. And we're not really interested in trying to learn a whole different program. So I'm crossing my fingers at the 20 watt that will light burn will run it is the way to go it's, instead of it's just hoping and praying time. so it's just time what, what about if there's a 50 watt that could run light burn would that pique your interest it pique um, mine okay am i driving to knoxville again uh no <laughs> <laughs> no no not for that one I wish. No, I'm, yes. I'm still on easy. I'm still on Are easy cat three about a over here. Mopa? No, just a 50 watt non Mopa, non Pro. And and burn. I I don't know if you know if the the individuals that have them and that's a recommendation. Hey, the 20 watts going to take eight hours to do this. The 50 watts going to take you 15 minutes. Then, of course, 
that that would be the the time as the selling part. Yeah. I mean, you're now, talking about also. Yeah. Also think about this. No matter really what fiber you get, what fiber Galvo you get, even if it has the EasyCAD three or the three D board in it or whichever one that is, there are people that take and buy the ninety nine dollar EasyCAD Lite board for EasyCAD two, and they swap out the controller, and then whenever Lightburn decides to get EasyCAD three compatible, then they can throw their other board back in that came with it. So that's an option as well. You could probably run any fiber that you that would best fit your situation with Lightburn no matter what. So if that's what you wanted to stick that with, you see a, what I'm saying? You got a circuit. It's, it's, a change, quick, it's a quick swap too. It's not, yeah. I don't think it's anything spectacular. Yeah, it's, it's, the one it's almost made. a direction. But that uh, Alex guy some did? people are doing that. Yeah, oh, get on 911 if I fall. You're in the Brian, You might, you might want to have the stop record button. <laughs> ready, Heck ready no. to go. Uh, I need this. I need this for evidence and YouTube. <laughs> yeah, there's four. There, there's four plugs on that controller. Okay, yeah. so here's my question. They're all like serial cables. If it's so easy, why isn't it being done at the factory? Well, for us it's easy. You're talking uh, about some for Thunder specifically. Ones? Uh, Thunder China is putting out the – they're re-looking at that and looking at putting out some 50-watt. That's what Chris was talking about with the non-pro. They didn't recognize the impact that the pro series is going to have with it not being Lightburn compatible. You see? Okay. I had recommended from the beginning to give people the option of buying a $100 board, putting it in there, when and if and when Lightburn ever, you know, got ready for their – their pro board or the, the easy cad three when it was compatible with that then they could put their board that came with the machine back in and sell that light board on ebay or something you know or something to that effect it's common enough that they've made video tutorials on how to do it on lasers everything under the crash courses for the galvos so a lot of people have been doing that you know are willing to spend 100 bucks on a card uh, to be able to run light burn on whatever machine they've got so don't let it won't run light burn keep you from a machine that you think might be best for your you know whatever you need to use so it so let's play the game let's say we i opt to do that that doesn't void any warranties or anything like that then or do i just not, not if tell you recommend anybody? it well that would be one <laughs> option you could also if it's a thunder machine you could contact support and we could just make sure that we make sure that all those steps okay. are followed and things like that. And then we'd cover that. We would never recommend something and then not honor that if something happened. You know what I mean? Well, I won't buy another machine. So another brand. I got a feeling I'm headed back over to try to fix a boss again here soon. I'm not really excited <laughs> about that. Um. So, yeah, I mean, if it's something that y'all are coming out with, y'all recommend, of course, you know, from a business perspective, I'm absolutely interested in. And, you know, um, and if I can get somebody else to front the money, then it's even better. Mm -hmm. So, But there's options for sure. So, all right. Hey, all right. Look what time it is. Not, not that I'm glad it's over, just that. We had a nice, productive, full one hour. That's great. And, and no awkward silence moments. I mean, oh, you didn't even talk about true. the damage freeze. It's official. We we 